Hi y'all, today is Friday, April 22nd, and this video is going to walk you through everything you need to know for today. So the first thing you need to do when the bell rings is you need to go to No Red Ink, and you need to complete the pre-assessment over contractions. Your pre-assessment is due today. The practice is going to be available from today until Thursday, the 28th, and then your quiz is on Friday, April 29th, when you walk in the door. So right now, Go to Nord Inc., take your pre-assessment over contractions, and then come back to this video. So once you're done with your pre-assessment in Nord Inc., we are going to start our Cornell notes. So Cornell notes are the way that we are going to gather all of the information about your research topic. Cornell notes are a way to focus on just the most important information from your sources instead of getting so distracted by the smaller, minute details. So to get to these Cornell notes, you're going to go to Today's Create, and you're going to open up that attachment in Notability. So you should have this attachment open in Notability. And before we start diving into the sources, you will notice that there are a total of five sources here. Four are required. That fifth source is here in case you find more information that you want to take notes over, but four is the required number of sources. So in this top left corner, we need to go ahead and fill out this information with your name. So write your first and your last name. And then we need to write your research focus. So your research focus is your research question that you came up with yesterday and wrote in the middle of your mind map. So whatever your research question is, you are going to put under research focus. So my research question is, should all teachers be paid the same regardless of the state they live in? So I'm going to write that question down and you are going to write your question down. So once you've written your research focus down, then we can move into source number one. And source number one is what we are focusing on for today. So of course, before we can take notes over source number one, we have to find source number one. So we need to find a source online that tells us information about a specific part of our topic. What I don't wanna do is just search for my research question. I want to come up with a specific topic that I can look at that is related to my research question. So my overarching research question is should all teachers be paid the same regardless of the state they live in? So I need to know in order to answer this question, one of the things I need to know is what is the cost of living from state to state? Because that might explain why teachers are not necessarily paid the same based on the state that they live in. So I am curious about figuring out the cost of living per state. So I need a source that talks about the cost of living per state. So I'm going to go to Safari, and I'm just in Google, I'm going to search cost of living by state. And I'm going to look at the different websites that come up. Now remember, in order to be a credible source, we usually want to stick with .org, .gov, or .edu websites. We don't want to use Wikipedia. We don't want to use blogs. We don't want to use social media. We want to stick with the more reputable sources. So I see at the very top of my page, there is a .gov website. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this .gov website. And before I commit to using this source, I want to just briefly skim through it and make sure that it has the information that is actually useful to me. So I can see that this is the cost of living data series based out of Missouri, but it does have information about all the different states and it is categorized by the cost of living, which is what I'm looking for. It has a map with that information, also has a chart that tells me how that cost of living was calculated 
and it has all the different states, which is really helpful to me. It then has specific information about Missouri, which I don't need that information, but the rest of this information is good. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this source. Now, if your first website you click on doesn't have the information you need, then we don't need to use that. Then you need to go and find a different source. But I'm going to use this source for now. So then on my Cornell notes, Okay, on my Cornell notes, I'm going to write down the source topic. That is, what is this source mainly about? So this source that I'm looking at is mainly about cost of living by state. And then for source type, you're going to circle either online or print. Of course, if you found it through Safari, it's online. If you checked out a book from the library, that would be print. This source is online. And then we have the bibliography citation. And for citations, if you go through Mac and Via, usually the citation is going to be there for you. But if you just use Google like I did, then I like to use easybib.com, which is a website that creates citations for you. So easybib.com, what that looks like, just like it says up there, it's easybib.com, and it will walk you through the process of creating a citation. So you would click where it says create citations, and you are citing a website. You could paste, copy and paste the URL that you used from your source, and then this website will create the citation for you. Now my citation, I already created, so I'm going to go ahead and write that citation down. And while I'm doing this, it's gonna take me a minute, so you can go ahead and cite your source on EasyBib. Okay, so I wrote mine by hand, but you are more than welcome to just copy and paste directly from easybib.com. That is completely great. So now that we have all of the information, we can actually go through and read the article and take our notes. So look at this chart for your Cornell notes. So in the far left column, this is where you are going to write down main ideas, questions you have, and keywords that stand out to you. These can come from headings, your own questions, new vocabulary, etc. If you are using a book, you will write down page numbers. If you are using an online source like I am, you do not have to write down page numbers. And then in the right column is where you are going to be writing down summaries, paraphrasing, quotes from the text. You can insert pictures, video links for future reference. You are writing answers to the questions that you asked in this left column. You're writing down definitions of those keywords you wrote in the left column. So you can picture it as this left column is the big idea, and then the notes and the details is the specific information about that big idea. So I am going to pull back up my article, and I am going to start reading this article here. So it says Missouri had the seventh lowest cost of living in the United States for 2021. In general, the most expensive areas to live were Hawaii, Alaska, the Northeast, and the West Coast. The least expensive areas were the Midwest and the Southern states. Merrick derives the cost of living index for each state by averaging the indices of participating cities and metropolitan areas in that state. 
Missouri's cost of living index for 2021 was 89.8. Okay, so I am looking and seeing how they have even figured out what this cost of living is per state. So on my notes for my main idea and my keyword, I'm just going to write cost of living. And I'm going to explain what the article has said about how they determine cost of living. And I'm going to do so with a direct quote. And since I'm copying directly from the text, I want to put quotation marks. And I'm answering that question of how did they calculate cost of living. And it says Merrick derives the cost of living index For each state by averaging the indices of participating cities in that state. And again, since I copied directly from the text, I'm going to put quotation marks around that information. So I'm going to keep reading and I'm going to look at this map and this chart. So it looks to me that the states with the lowest cost of living are Mississippi, Kansas, and Alabama. And then on the other side of that, the states with the highest cost of living, we have California, New York, DC, and Hawaii. So that's some information that I am interested in knowing. So on my Cornell notes, I'm going to write lowest as my main idea. Okay, the states with the lowest cost of living, and I have Mississippi, Kansas, and Alabama. And then the states with the highest cost of living We have Hawaii, DC, New York, and California. So I see what cost of living is. I see who has the lowest cost of living and the highest cost of living. But what I wanna know is what categories were even used to determine the cost of living. So that's a question I have that I'm going to write down here. What categories? were used to determine cost of living. So I'm going to go back to my article and I can see on this chart they tell me the different categories. They said grocery prices, housing prices, utilities, transportation, health, and miscellaneous. So those are the categories that they use to determine price of living. So I can add that to my Cornell notes. So I'm going to write grocery, housing, utilities, transportation, health, and a miscellaneous category. So I would follow this process for the whole entire article. On the left side, I'm getting main ideas, questions, keywords, and on the right side, including notes and details. And so once I have gone through and I have filled out all of those notes, then I'm going to answer these two important questions down at the bottom. So the first question says the most important or most interesting fact you learned from this source. So just reflect on the source and what's the most important or interesting thing that you learned. And I learned that states have different costs of living than other states. And then it says, what additional questions do you have about your topic? It is required that you come up with additional questions for your topic. So the question that I now have, now that I know there's different costs of living per state, I wanna know, do teacher salaries reflect the cost of living in each state? So that's the question that I'm going to ask.
And so that is the end of source number one. And then I would do the same thing, of course, for the rest of my sources. Now, at this point in time, once you have completed source number one, you are going to go to your mind map. And your mind map is what you started yesterday. This is where you wrote down a question, your research question, in the middle of your paper. So go ahead, pause this video if you need to, and get out your mind map. So in my mind map, my question in the middle was, should all teachers be paid the same? And so at this point, all you have is just that one question in the middle. And so now we need to start thinking about those sub questions. After what you read today, what questions do you still have about this topic? And those questions are going to branch out of this main circle. So one question I have still is uh, currently, are all teachers being paid the same? I also want to know, do teacher salaries currently reflect the cost of living? Okay, I want to know, uh, are teachers with more experience getting paid more than new teachers? So just like I'm doing, you are coming up with as many questions related to your topic as you can. And that is going to be your goal for today. Once you're done updating your mind map, then you, if you still have time, can go back and you can go back to source number two. And you can go ahead and continue on with taking notes with a new source. But your goal for today is to be done with source number one and to update your mind map.